Hi everybody, how's it going? I'm Pabs, a right scene VTuber and an artist, and... Hmm, that's a very strange thing that's happening to the... That's happening to the closed captions. I'm not sure I like that. But it doesn't seem to be serious, so I'm not going to take it too seriously either. So how have you all been? I am doing quite well. Uh, today we're going to be doing a... So, if you want to make a Live 2D model... I'm going to... I feel like there needs to be a way to add words to this thing's vocabulary. Anyway, uh, to make a Live 2D model, before you make a Live 2D model, before you animate a Live 2D model, you need to be able to have the actual thing in place. I didn't explain that correctly. Like, um, You need to be able to make the, the assets to the animation first before you can actually rig the model. It, it, you have the model, you need to animate it in Life 2D, but before that you need to actually make the model. Okay, I think that one that one was a ticket. I feel like that one was a way to explain it. So, um, we're gonna... I feel very scatterbrained today. I don't know, I don't... <laughs> I don't know what's happening to me. Uh, let's just head on over to the working screen and we can talk more on the way there. There we go. Okay, so you might have you might all remember Gale here. Uh, she was a character that I designed based off of this shoe that doesn't exist. Uh, Gale's supposed to be a motorbike Dulahan, I think it was supposed to be. Like, I I don't know. She's got a motorcycle helmet, so that's got to count for something, I believe. Okay, so let's kind of just copy and paste this into a new canvas. So that we can actually make a live 2D model. Now, I recommend, in my experience, making these models. The thing that I found that works best is if you just make them as huge as possible. And then downscale them later, as need be. So, let's say... Width 6000 by 8000? That feels like a relatively good one. Um... Might actually go for eight thousand five hundred because she, because she's actually kind of a she's actually kind of a bean pole here. Yeah, you, to give you an idea, that that image is like eight hundred by sixteen hundred. <laughs> this is a really big canvas, but like I said, it, it it actually helps to make it that big. Okay, and the other thing that we're gonna want to get is a symmetry tool thing going on here, a symmetry ruler. That's just going to help keep everything nice and nice and clean. So I, I know that we don't have perfect symmetry in this design, but it, it, but it's going to be something. Toast, how you doing? Hey, how you how you been? All right. Uh, how, how do I get a symmetry ruler ru ru like smack dab in the middle of this canvas? I've never figured out how to get things perfectly symmetrical because like I I I don't know how to place a ruler like right in the middle of the canvas. Symmetrical ruler. Good, having a burger. How are you? Oh man, I wish I was having a burger. That sounds really good right now. Enjoy your burger, but yeah, I'm doing good. I, we're, I'm I'm just starting out here. I'm uh I'm gonna make this design into a life 2D model. The only way I know how, which is one way. How was I? How did I do this thing again? I feel like I remember how to do this. <laughs> I, f I feel like I should remember how to do this. <laughs> the thing is, right, like, I like I like my Life 2D model, but it's also one of the only ones that I've ever made. I made one, like, a little bit after... Yeah, I, I made one in between now and when I made my Life 2D model. I, and this kind of, like, very haggard-looking girl who had, a, who had a mug on it that, says, that said, like, the miracle. I'm still very proud of that design. But um, I, I didn't manage to actually properly rig that one. One, because um, I, I wasn't using the full version of Live 2D, so I couldn't like rig the mouth properly. And secondly, because it's just kind of a long process that I didn't really have much fun with. But that is A-OK. -okay. Do you know why? Because I want to get better at making Live 2D models. Yeah, it's something that I've been meaning to do to kind of improve with my Live2D models. I, I feel like I can really do some impressive stuff with it. 
And I feel like I feel like it's going to be much more rewarding than just sticking to one thing, which is just making illustrations, right? Making illustrations is fine, and it's been my lifeblood, the lifeblood of this channel in particular since the very beginning. But I do like... Um, you know, it feels cool watching stuff move. And live 2D models are one of the few ways that I can accomplish that. Okay. I need to make sure to not make this like too, too, too tall. Or rather, I need to make sure that if I do make it tall, I need to I need to make it like proportionate. <sighs> God, okay. <laughs> I don't know how to put it. Working in symmetrical mode always stresses me the hell out because one, I'm not used to it, and two, I feel like it's got much higher stakes. You know, it's like. If you mess up with a non-symmetrical model, that's fine. That like if you if you're just making an illustration, it's fine to make to you know do some stuff, do some wacky stuff here and there because you know in the end at the end of the day, what matters is if the drawing looks good. You know that, that's kind of like the end goal is to just make the drawing look good. But with life to do stuff, it's much more complicated. So I think that stresses me out a little bit. I'm I'm a little bit out of my element here. But that's exactly why it's important to do streams like this, to kind of get more comfortable with it in a safe environment. Well, safe-ish. I'm not going to bullshit you. This will be dangerous. If the program is displeased with how I'm drawing, it will explode. Yeah, it, it, I, I bought my... Um, I wasn't supposed to tell you guys this, but I that, but I did buy my current computer from a, this dude who called himself a uh, Mister Needful, and uh, I you know I, I thought something was off with him at first. He he when he laughed, it sounded like you know the souls of the damned crying out in pain, and he smelled of fire and brimstone, which I thought it was just like his cologne. You know, if you've seen like <laughs> Rift Paths. Yeah, you know, if you've smelled like newer versions of Axe body spray, you'll know what I'm talking about. Like some dudes are rank and they seem to do it on purpose. Anyway, it turns out that like he did curse my PC to like explode if I draw it too badly. So, you know, if I fuck up too bad, it's going to it's going to be a problem, I think. Okay, anyway, let's make these... Hmm. Oh, yeah, hi, bunny. Um, okay, so... I think that I think we're not going to be able to see, like, this back part of the calf, so I'm not going to worry about that just yet. Uh, okay, so this is going to have a thing here. Then another thing down, up here. Should I make the pants a little bit higher waisted? I think I should. You know, there she's not wearing a uh, belt, so I think it's fine if I make it a little higher waisted. Hmm. Actually, that is a good question. How are her pants being kept up? Because like, you know, I feel like the, the way that this that this kind of a half chap is arranged, it, I feel like that would pull down on the pants heavily. I mean, I guess it's not a problem if you're sitting, sitting down most of the day, but I feel like, you know, I feel like eventually that's not going to be a, you know, that, that's going to become a problem at some point in the future. Yeah, there's there's upsides and downsides I think to making like non-symmetrical character designs for VTubing because on the upside, you know, it, if if you're um, working with non-symmetrical designs, I feel like it's almost easier when you get to the actual like 
How do I put this? Like anything that you, anything you do to cut corners in one component will end will end up creating more work for you in another component. Like this is true for just about anything, but I feel like it's been particularly true for me at least when it comes to live 2D rigging. Because you know, when I <clears throat> You know, if you if you fuck up on the like cutting and the model making at first, it's going to be a problem later on in the line and you'll need to fix that in the actual animation. And in some cases you won't even be able to fix it with the animation. You'll need to be able you'll need to have to go back to the uh, PSD file and do some trickery with it there. Okay, which one of these suckers is Well, I'm not going to worry about that too much. This is just a sketch layer, after all. Should drink some water. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Earlier today, I went to get a haircut. Um, I, get the, I get one about every three months or so. That's when it starts to get, like, unmanageably shaggy. So that's kind of when I prefer to have, go to the barbers. Or the hair salon. Or what, what, whatever you call it. I feel like... it. I don't know. I don't know if there's like a like a meaningful difference between like barbershop hair salon, but perhaps you don't have hair. No, uh, yeah, but still, I have to like. All right, I wasn't supposed to tell you guys this, but I do wear a wig to go to the office. Um, they think I'm a normal human even in my rice form, but I do have to wear a wig. And you know, to keep up appearances, I do have to go get my hair cut every t every single time. I ask to take just a little bit off of the wig. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I have to take, ask them to take just a little bit off of the wig, but uh, eventually I have to get a new wig. It, 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 that's like a year-long process, though, so it's not really a problem. In any case... Well, what was I talking about? Right, the haircut. So... <laughs> um... <laughs> Shit, the K-pop AI set up right now is really going to come back to bite me in the ass because this relies on me having, like, natural hair. <laughs> Alright, immersion breaking aside, I went to the barbershop earlier today, and this would have been a lot easier to just say I went in my human form, huh? <laughs> well, it's too late now. Alright, so I went to the barbershop with my fake wig. <laughs> and... The I've learned two things about my fake wig hair that is also my real hair that I'm not supposed to say is my real hair, but is my real hair. One, I actually have a double crown, which what that means is that usually when you look at the back of somebody's head, I'm gonna need to like undo. What are you doing to the wigs? To, what are you doing to wigs to go through them? <laughs> Getting them cut at the hair salon. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Because you know, I, I don't want I don't want I don't want to be left out from the haircutting process, from the biological process of getting your hair cut. Anyway, um, okay, where how, how do I do this bit? Um, speaking of doing bits, I don't need. I need to do a couple of things. I need to like figure out how to make the eyes look like less weird, but. Anyway, I went to the barber sh uh, barbershop earlier today because I need to get my hair cut. W real, fake, what have you. D you. You write your own story to this. I went to get my hair cut, and I've learned two things. One, I have a double crown, which essentially means that, um, you know, when you look at the back of somebody's hair, they their hair usually parts in a specific way. So usually they, they have a single crown here. So that means that their hair will start to go will grow downwards from here and outwards from there. And, you know, that's pretty fine. But mine apparently has two of these. And when the guy showed them to me, it looked a little bit like some kind of weird fucked up bull horns or perhaps some kind of some manner of bird. And apparently that's the reason why, like, all my life I've had an issue where, like, the hair, like, right around here kind of, like, puffs up like this while the rest of it is normal. And it turns out that that's because, like, they just keep cutting the hair, like, right in between the crown. So it just kind of spikes up naturally like that. This is the first time in all 22 years of my life that I've learned, that I've, that I've known of this. 
What? <laughs> Isn't that nuts? Like... I, uh, no other barber has realized that. This is the first time I'm hearing of it. Oh yeah, also my hair was so thick that it ended up... I think it was like denting the razor. I don't know what happened. The guy had to like break out a bo bottle of razor lubricant to get through my hair. Weirdly enough, I feel kind of proud of that. <laughs> I feel I feel like I, I it's all it's normal to be proud of that, I feel. Anyway, I was looking for the liquify tool here. I'm gonna copy and paste this just in case. Is there a way to like hang on, is there a way to make this obey the symmetrical rules? Oh, it will! Oh, that's handy. Okay, so... Here's what we do. Increase the bro- <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, their poor triangle head! <laughs> Th that was so misshapen. I, I feel like I should apologize to the drawing. Okay, then we'll push these kind of inward here. If I can figure out which tool I need to use for that. Hmm. Push right. Okay, this is not pushing right, I don't think. Oh, here we go. No, I don't want to make them look like a Pixar mom. <laughs> okay, no, I feel like now we need to push left almost. Hmm. Okay, I think we're fine. I think I'm starting to get the hang of this. And nope. Mm -hmm. All right, it's a good thing that this is just like a sketching layer. I'm trying to think of how to handle this because uh, how how to do this in like live 2D way in like a live 2D way. I should drink some water. <sighs> yeah, I, I get the distinct impression that this is not going to be a one stream kind of deal. What does this look like before I transformed it? Okay, so looking back at the original, I think what I need to do is crack this kind of down a little bit. The hips and the shoulders a little bit as well. Do you want to see the smallest ice cream sandwich ever? Oh brother, you know I want to see that shit. Send it to me at once. The smallest ice cream sandwich ever. <laughs> It's got. <laughs> what does that? What would that look like? Hang on. Yeah, send it to me through the Discord or something. I want to see it. I I, I would I wish to see the smallest ice cream sandwich. Oh my god, that's a, that is adorable. <laughs> Hang on, I gotta. I gotta put this on on camera. <laughs> Did you make those, or how, where did you find these? Look at those, they're adorable. 
It's like they're made for for mice or something. <laughs> That's that is the smallest ice cream sandwich I've ever seen. Nah, no, I bought them. Hmm. You know, maybe we can make them bigger though. There, now they're normal sized. <laughs> That's really cool, though. God, I was, I, I was and still am to some extent obsessed with ice cream sandwiches. I really like them. I, I, there's no rational explanation for my, my intense love for them, but I just really like ice cream sandwiches. Okay. Now comes the hard part, which is that now that we have the kind of... Um, sketch layer done. We actually need to make the drawing. And I say that this is the hard part because this is this is like a thing where you need to split it up to like multiple layers and everything. Which is not particularly fun. <laughs> but Lord knows Mama didn't raise a quitter, so let's get her started. So I think the easiest place to start would probably be the head. So Okay, I think the way we do this is we... I, I took care of this in in my own modeling with using the color pa with the with using these like color labels that you can put on here. So I am going to label the sketch layers and the reference layers with purple. And I'm going to delete to label any layers that I might need to delete once we export the model with um, what do you call it? With, um, with red. I feel like that'll be important to do. Okay. Also, how am I gonna get, like, the helmet on here? I might be able to get, to get it in with, like, a second belt, or just attach this, um... Pant leg. I don't know, are there any kind of like a uh, helmet holsters? Helmet hip bag. Eh, I mean, kind of. I'm just getting kind of like these fanny pack advertisements here. More ones for concealed carry. That's disturbing. Let's see. What what catchy jingle or bit of advertising has stuck with you? Uh, I, also, hi, Leo. I I, can, I don't I don't have one in particular. I don't think. Yeah, none of them come come to come like none of them. Um, no, I don't have any off the top of my head. Well, that's weird. Why's the why's the closed captions no longer working? Hello. That is super weird. Why is the jingle is wait. I thought I'd get an interesting answer from you, considering the places you've been. Yeah, I don't know. Also, I'm gonna need to, like, uh, reload this thing. I don't know why it paused for whatever reason. Hmm. Everyone else said Meow Mix, so Mattress Company and the Tax General. Huh. Oh wait, hang on. Maybe I need to like open and close my micro my microphone source. Hang on. Okay, maybe now. All right. I don't know why my uh, my closed captions stopped working. That's very weird. I don't think that's supposed to happen. 
Hmm. Well, that's annoying. Also, I just say, came to say hi. I gotta go. All right, see you soon. Uh, okay, the fact that it's no longer producing text is concerning. Tools and. Captioning enabled, captioning it, okay. Oh, I think we got it back. I hope we got it back at least. Yeah, there we go. There we go, I just had to kick the jukebox a little bit to, start, to turn it off and then turn it back on. Oh, jeez, okay. <laughs> All right, anyway, like I was saying, um. If we don't have a way to hold the helmet on the hips, I think we're just going to need to invent one ourselves. So I think what that means is we're going to be adding a second or perhaps third belt to this character. So here's what I'm thinking. Instead of having this one kind of belt here, this one right here, this kind of like loop belt, I, I propose that we kind of attach that a little bit. So we have that kind of like, we have the helmet strap here. We clasp it somehow onto, or even like without the clasp, we can just kind of like fit it into this whole thing, and that's how it's going to be held. I feel like that's a good trade-off. I feel like that's going to be a fair thing to do. But yeah, one, th one step at a time, I think. For now, let's just disable the ruler so we can actually fit that in there. <clears throat> Okay, first though, let's make the actual half chap thing that we've got on her. Hmm. Oh wait, what if it was like a triangle shaped buckle? That would be cool. It's going to be a little bit more work, but I think it's worth it. And then up here, we'll have this one out here, kind of creating an another triangle. <laughs> this poor girl is going to have so many triangles on her design, it's not even going to be funny. <laughs> I almost don't like it having that second triangle there. Maybe we can have it like... Wait, what if we had it like across the chest like this? I feel like that would be cool. Yeah, okay. Now we're, now it's coming together. Hmm. No, that that's a little inelegant. I don't I don't want to kind of like make it too burdensome. What about Hmm. Let me drink some water. May another kind of carabiner, but that would be that would be a little bit too much with the class ball right kind of there. I could just have it kind of be around here. Oh, wait, what? I think maybe I can make like the middle part here, this middle part here, this, um, this middle part of the cat ear helmet. I can add that to the class here as well. That might work. I could also just have, have her kind of holding it already. Kind of like that, and that might make it a little bit easier as well. But that's just a lot of other elements that would be introduced, and I think like that, if hmm. I don't know, I I kind of like that idea actually. Hmm. Yeah, okay, let's do it. No use hesitating. 
If it turns out if it turns out good or if it turns out bad, at least we'll have tried something interesting, and I think that's the most important thing of all. Okay. So. Yeah, we're gonna be passing around this ruler a lot in this. Alright, uh, G pen. Yeah, let's use the normal G pen. Hmm. So, for the kind of holographic border we've got here, let me turn that up a little bit. Whoop. No, layer, layer submenu, come back! <laughs> I didn't mean it! Okay, there we go. Um, I tell you, that happens every uh, every few days around here. I accidentally just like rip out one of the submenus and just leave it on the wall. <laughs> then I have to kind of like kind of like shove it back in. Like, have you ever seen Surgeon Simulator? It's a little bit like that. <laughs> as long as you kind of get it in the right in the right ish place, everything should be just fine. Hmm. Wait, I have a triangle tool, don't I? Rectangle, polyline, straight line, lasso fill, polygon, here we go. Alright, we're gonna want three corners. And then rounding the corners, here we go. Ooh, that's an interesting kind of shape there. Unfortunately, we do only need one, so I'm gonna just make one off to the side here and then destroy the other one. Also, we're gonna need those to be a little bit more round. Just a touch. There we go, that's better. Now, the main issue will come from having the, this be, like, smack dab in the middle. That's going to be the most challenging part of all this. We could get it a little bit higher. Up like this, and to the side. Cha-cha real smooth. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, and then we can just kind of color pick from this here. Turn off the reference layers, and then we can just kind of do it like... Why is the opacity low on this? There we go. We can increase the brush size for this a little bit to make it more obvious. Also, I feel like maybe we should have gone with the route of making it like a darker color. So maybe kind of like that. There we go. Yeah, that, that feels right. Also, we, I, I kind of want to get some scan line stuff going on here. So I think like the best way to do that is actually to... Very similarly to what I was, I was originally going to do. Get a ruler in here and... What is this? Uh, we need a parallel ruler. Parallel line, step of angle. Okay. I remember there was a brush that gave you like multiple lines. Where did where did that go? I think it was in one of the pattern brushes. Somewhere around here. It might have been one of the hatching brushes, yeah. Weird. I could have sworn there was something like that around here. Well, nothing to, left to do but to brute force it. 
Although I guess we could just use vector layers for this. Hang on. Oh wait, no, I got an even better idea. Hang on. Okay, so we've got we'll get like three lines like about yay far apart. And then we'll convert this to a Actually no, we'd have to do it at the very at the very, at the very near the top so that it would work, I think. Okay. Do that. Wait, is this on the same layer? Damn it! Okay, no, we'll, we'll, we'll need to do something else then. Hmm. I will say, I, I mentioned before that one of the reasons that I like working on like live 2D, live 2D things is because I feel like it's much more rewarding. In a, it, it has like a different feel to just doing stuff through normal illustration work. And part of that reward, I feel, is like the kind of puzzle aspect to it. You know, it's like you want to make it look like a certain way. How can you best achieve that? And obviously, that's not that's something that I can get outside of the live two D. Kind of outside of making live two D stuff, I can also get that. But it's also it's the easiest way for me to get something like that. It's live two D has so many unique kind of quirks and things that it needs to function properly, that it's just kind of interesting to figure out how you can achieve those. Convert layer, uh, image material, object, tiling, vertical tiling. Hmm. Oh dear. I don't I think I think I might have goofed somewhere. Oh no, there we go. No, I don't unless like maybe I need to be like higher. Yeah, no, I'm not sure what I did wrong here. <laughs> hmm. Well, if it's just lines, then I'm guessing we can probably just find something else to use here. You know, if it's just like CRT scan lines. Yeah, like... These things feel like they could work. Uh... Maybe. Maybe they can work. <laughs> well, l let me try some other things as well. Let me just look through my bag of tricks in here. Okay, we don't have a scan line thing, but we do have like a TV static thing. So let's try that. Okay. Yeah, I don't want it to look too, too rough is the thing. <clears throat> a little bit of roughness is good, but too rough is not good. Yeah, I think this one's kind of going to be the best one that we can do. <clears throat> I will say, though, like, I feel like maybe I should, like, lower this a little bit. Just a little bit. Because we're going to need to have a... Oops. We're going to need to have a kind of glow effect to the head. Although I guess I can compensate for that a little bit by having just a lower turtleneck here. I think that's that's the most sensible answer. It's 
So this is going to be the head. Head base, I'm going to call it. Okay, then there's going to be the eyes. I need to borrow that ruler here. Okay, so the eyes, I think, are just going to be kind of like pure white. Oh, they're actually kind of like a yellowish color. Hmm. Originally, I planned to make both of them like this kind of triangle shape, but that looks a little... It, it, like, because of the, because of like the kind of expression like this, it, it kind of looks like they have their, like she has her eyes closed. So I'm, I'm going to try and figure out another one that I can use. Hmm. I wanted to go for like this diamond shape earlier, but I feel like that's almost kind of too creepy. <laughs> I could just go for like good old, good old kind of like rounded eyes like that. I feel like that might be the friendliest. Yeah, I feel like that's that's a good choice. Yeah, the other good news is that because this one is going to have a that that kind of like rice beast I I think. Yeah, the good news is that because this one has like a very cartoony simple face, it's not going to take much effort to kind of get a close or anything. Oh hey, Andala, thank you for the raid. How you doing? Yeah. Oh right, you were playing Gloomwood. I was really looking forward to that. I, 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 I'm not gonna. I'm not planning on playing it myself, but it seems like a very interesting game. How was it? Pretty good. Nice. Sorry, sticky hands can't type. It's okay, but we've all been there. <laughs> okay. I'm eating oranges. Nice. It's really fun. Oh, that's cool. I'm glad. I'm, I'm, that's great to hear. All right. So that's gonna. I'm gonna like delete this other eye here, some other time. Okay. So I R. I'm gonna call this one. Yeah. I'm glad to hear. It's it's good that you had a good time. But yeah. Uh, feel feel free, feel free to do, um, cool your heels here or. Do what you need to do outside of stream. Um, but yeah, thank you for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Okay, so with the mouth... It's weird because, like, again, because this is, how's the model going? It's presented a lot of interesting challenges. Which, you know, I think is going to happen no matter what. So, I, it's going well, I think. Yeah, I, right now I'm trying to figure out how this mouth is going to work. Because usually, in live 2D models, you need to... Like, you see my mouth here? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. That's got like six different parts to it. So it's got the top lip, the bottom lip, etc. But because this is just going to be like a triangle, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know how to do how to shape it. Oh, although something that I can do is to figure out how that would look like, like with add, multiply, etc. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to increase the luminosity on these suckers. Yeah, I should get them to be more or less pure white. Okay, so... <clears throat> I think what I'm going to do is actually I'm just going to make another triangle, very similar to this one here. I'm just going to make another triangle and use that as a mouth and then sculpt it later in Live 2D. I feel like that's the best option I can give myself. Unless... Unless... No, wait. Wait, no, 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 yes, actually. Okay, so... No, wait. Okay, so there's this thing you can do in Live 2D called, like, invert clipping which basically means that unlike unlike with normal clipping where 
Okay, how do I put this? Um, okay, so let's use this as an example. Uh, as an example. So we've got the, these two eyes here, right? So I've set them as a clipping layer to the head, the head of the base of the head. So if I move them outside of the base of the head, they're going to vanish. They can only appear where the base of the head is. And normally you want that because you don't want your eyes kind of fucking off to the to the other side of the street of the screen without getting by and getting disembodied from their head. All right, that that's not most people can't do that. I don't think. I wouldn't know. I don't have eyes. But there's this thing that you can do that's called invert um, invert clipping, where basically it's only where the th where okay so like. Obviously, it's like the opposite, so anywhere that the triangle isn't is where the eyes would appear. And I was going to say, maybe I can do something like that with this, but that would also require kind of giving up on this idea of like the static head model, but to be fair, I wasn't really at all that attached to it anyway. Yeah, I, I think that's what we're going to do. Let's get rid of like the static clipping layer here. Although we can change up the color of the of this thing a little bit to compensate for that. There we go. On the bright side though, no teeth. That's gonna be useful. Okay. Um let's call this mouth. And we can just make this like a big old O shape, like right here. In the middle. We're gonna need to get that in the middle there. Okay. This reminds me of um, that one Pokemon, Snom. <laughs> okay, uh, what about... Oh, I think this one's gonna work. We just need to move that up a little bit. The eyes are make are upsetting me a little bit here, but like, like I said, this is gonna be just a simple model that I want to kind of rig together. I don't think I'm going to be able to make like the glitching effect on the on the model unless we do some stuff with um, BTube Studio itself. I think like maybe if we like if we do like an animate uh, if we export it if we export a GIF with the with like some glitching effects, I think we might be able to accomplish the same effect. But actually, I don't know. I don't. I could have it as a background animation in Live 2D. But I'm just worried about like the complexity of the model if that's the case. Hmm. Okay, if that's the case, then I've got, I've got an idea for how to do it. Okay, so... Copy and paste the head base. Merge the socketed layer so it's just one thing. I actually have a blender brush that blending bl brush that can like glitch stuff out. Like so. I know I also have like some things like this, so I don't know. I don't Okay, so first I should probably vanish the lower layer so that I can actually see what I'm doing. Then... Okay. <clears throat> 
Okay, now I've got an I've I've got an idea for how to do this now. So what we can do is we can get three different head bases and then have those kind of cycle between each other in a background animation. I feel like that's one way that we can do this. And there was also a little one up here. Yeah, it, it's not going to be too, too fancy, but it... <clears throat> excuse me. It's not going to be too fancy, but I think, like, it's going to work at least. So I'm going to call that a headbase G1, and this is going to be headbase G2. I'm just going to hide those away for, for the moment while we work on the rest of this. Also, this mouth is bugging me. So what we can do for that is actually, again, kind of use this liquefy tool. Maybe on a smaller scale, because we know for a fact that that one's going to be, like, uh, that one's effective. Okay, and then we can kind of go back to doing what we were going to do originally, which was to add a <clears throat> top lip and a bottom lip layer here. So that's going to be top lip. Maybe I should call it lip top. Okay. And that's going to kind of come, come in like this. And then we'll do a... Do, <laughs> this is kind of a nice smile they've got going on here. And then we can do one on the bottom. So that's going to be lip, lip bottom. But I need to make to work hard to make sure that this doesn't look like creepy or anything. This seems good. I like this. Yeah. What's that look like without the head base? Okay, let's round that out a little bit. Just a little bit. Got it. The the only thing that I can liken to to like all right. So life two D models are wonderfully complex pieces of machinery, but that also does mean that when you peel back the curtain a little bit, they do start looking a little bit like animatronics, which is to say, slightly terrifying. There we go. I like that. That's a nice smile. Is it just me or, the, or is this one a little bit to the left somehow? I feel like it is. Let me just shift it just a little bit like this. No, somehow that's more uneven. How did it get uneven? I've been using the friggin' symmetry brush this whole time. Oh, maybe it was because of the way that the um, that the warping was done. Okay, if that's the case, I don't really need to worry about that. We could also just kind of start over a little bit now that we know a little bit more about what we're doing.
or rather we know more about how we're going to be achieving this in particular. There we go. See, much friendlier looking. Like I said, the I, I will say that the eye is bugging me with how like round it is, so I'm gonna redo that also. Sorry, bud. Yeah. No, th those are too far apart. I, I did hear somebody say once on like one of those YouTube tutorials that if, if in doubt, it's better to put the eyes closer together than to put them farther apart. Yeah, I feel like that one's relatively safe. I should drink some water. Okay. Yeah, this is definitely not getting done in one stream, I don't think. Okay, so from there... Also, I, f I, feel, I feel like maybe I should put the put a yellow sticker on ones that I need to like... Un-symmetrize? Yeah, I don't think that's a word. Desymmetrize might be the word. Make them not symmetrical. Asymmetrize, that might be the word. Well, whatever. Um, okay, so... I'm trying to think about the kind of like structure of this. So, in the, bo in the bottom we'd have to have the belly here. Then it'd go into... We'd ha need to have the shirt. Then the, jack then the two jacket stuff on things on top. Probably with... One for the zipper and one for the back of it. Uh, maybe I should like make the jacket almost like inward a little bit so you can see a little bit of the triangles here. I feel like that would make it easier once I get into live 2D. You know, worst case scenario, I stretch out the triangle and then st stretch it back in to hide it. <laughs> Goodness, what is happening to me today? Okay. Of course, all of that is easier said than done. It's going to take a while to pull this off, no matter what. But the good news is that there are tools to accomplish this, no matter in either case. Okay. So to get our layers of our our orders of operation right, uh, we're going to make the body layer here. Body base, or belly base, I think I'm going to call it. Okay, add a new one there. Yeah, the good news is that because the shirt is going to be kind of wrapping around the entire body, I just need to kind of like make a brown blob in the middle of this for now. We can we can come back and, and uh, sophisticate it a little bit later. No, that's not that's not kind of what I wanted to do. Uh, yeah, I think just using the milli pen is going to be the ticket here. Okay, there we go. Skin tone. Hmm. I don't want to make it look ashy or anything. Okay. 
I'm gonna figure out like the exact color balance that I want on this. Okay, I feel like that's kind of a good color. Yeah, it, it just feels much more... I feel like because it's because of the surrounding colors that this one worked. That being said, we might we might be able to change we we might have to change it back once we have the other ones in place. But you know we'll 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 cross that bridge once we burn it or something like that. I I keep forgetting how that phrase goes. Okay, and then from there. Man, I probably should have used like a mod, like a 3D reference or something for this, huh? Oh well, what's done is done. I mean, on the other hand, what I could do is just very quickly get a 3D reference in here. Bring that back a little bit. Widen the hips a little bit so it's kind of closer to the model. Uh, okay, so I made the hands a little too long, but that's fine as well. Also, I gotta like move the arm to accommodate the helmet here. Okay, so how do I transform this so that I can so that it looks more accurate to the uh, model? Oh jeez, like I said, <laughs> because I'm still not super used to live 2D stuff. I always get stressed out when it comes to like, oh man, what's this gonna look like when once it's actually on the stage? Uh, it's 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 just a little bit of a panic button all around. So it's very easy for me to get kind of caught up in everything. On the other hand, we're going to be using the symmetrical rulers for everything, so it's not like I need to overthink this either. That being said, that, that kind of like egg stomach shape that we've got going on here can be a little bit smaller now, I think. Oh, wait. Hang on. I think it might be because I transformed the object that the symmetry ruler got it all, wo all wonky. If I just place this like a little bit there so it's in the middle of the triangle, I feel like that's just going to have much better dividends in the future. Just drink some water. God, I, it's only been an hour, but I feel kind of exhausted. <laughs> like I said, doing stuff outside of my wheelhouse is certainly rewarding, but it's always a little bit of a... How do I put this? Marathon of a process? Okay, there we go, there we go, there we go. Okay, cool. Yeah, I need to, I need to like, especially when it comes to like a typical VTuber designs, I, I really need to rely on the, uh, hang on, snap eraser, here we go. I, I need to rely a little bit on 3D models and such, because if, if it, if, I, if left to my own devices, I will make these people look like they can take a brick to the face and keep walking. I say this as with pride and love by the way I, i'm not upset by that i just recognize that there are different kind of like uses for each art style as it were 
Okay, so I've, I've, something else I'm noticing, though, is that it's not the, the sketch and everything isn't perfectly aligned to the model. So I need to kind of like shift that few piece, a few centimeters to the left here. There we go. Okay, now it should be nice and even. That 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 relaxes me a little bit. Okay, so hmm. From there, I think what we're gonna need to do is to kind of lower the opacity of the belly base and start working on the kind of undershirt here. So the way I'm going to do that is, first of all, add a new folder. Uh, let's call that shirt half. Yeah, because it, it, because except for the turtleneck, it, we can put the turtleneck on a separate layer and fix it and fix that problem that way. So I think what we're really just going to need to do is just kind of like um, this section here, like just below the, the turtleneck. That's kind of the thing that we need to worry about for this next part. So let's call that shirt base. And we can just kind of get started on that. That's really not going to be all that complicated, honestly. It's just going to be... Well, first I'm going to need the ruler. That's going to be the most complex part of it, honestly. It's just... Again, the most complex part of all of this is just making sure that it's all symmetrical. At least for me, you know? That's that's what comes... That's what's most challenging for me, is to make sure that everything is, is symmetrical. I kind of want to make the the curves here a little bit longer, like that, just so just in case we need to like move down the pants a little bit for whatever reason. We can get rid of the... God, that really is off-putting whenever you can just see the the armatures underneath everything. Um, we can just get rid of the head for a little bit there. Delete ruler on that. <clears throat> I also need to be careful because I know that the 3D models can kind of impose their authority on the vector layer lines which could be problematic in the future. Okay. And then from there, we need to make the actual neck for the turtleneck. So let's call that neck base. I don't know why I... <laughs> Even if I don't put anything on top of the layer, either way, I just call everything something or other base. I don't know why, it just feels very sturdy and secure. <laughs> psychological, psychological issue, I think. Okay, so then from there... The good news is that we can make the turtleneck as... kind of, um... as kind of asymmetrical as we want, since it's just a singular band. Of 
course, it does mean, mean that we have to do it all ourselves, but that's not really an issue, I don't think. It also starts to hurt your... I, I, again, this is all my process, and I imagine there's better ways to do ev literally everything that I'm doing right now. But it, it does start to hurt my head after a little while, because you just have, there's just so much visual information to deal with. Okay, so I think that a better way to do this is actually to do two of these. Okay. Yeah, actually, yeah, I think in retrospect, the, be the better way to do this is to make the front half of the turtleneck and the back half of the turtleneck. Yeah, I think that's what I did with my hoodie here, too. I also want to redraw the thickness of some of these lines down here on the proper shirt, because some of them feel a little too thin for me. Let's take care of that now. Okay, this thing does not work on both sides, so I need to be careful with that. On the other hand, I think this is just going to be converted into one thing once it's over, so it's not really going to be a problem if they're not super, super even. Hoping I'm, I didn't just jinx myself there. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So now... Yeah, I think we can just get rid of the base of the turtleneck and then do our half and half plan here. That's gonna kind of go in like this. There we go. And then we also need to use this to connect these few lines here. Then redraw vector line width. Control point. Aha. This is the one that's out of out of whack. Okay, and then going back, we can go back and we can add another vector layer. And then kind of fit, close the circuit, as it were, back here. Yeah. One of the main reasons that I'm doing the... I'm trying to make, like, Live 2D models on stream is because I do want to get better at Live 2D. It, that's the same reason why I challenge myself to literally everything, so Blender, stuff like that. That's also because I want to get better at what I do. Getting to kind of increase my skill range as an artist. But because... but like... I th this happens to a lot of people in other fields as well. I think like because you're competent at doing one thing, you expect to be so competent at something else that's kind of related to that. So like... I know that some people are, like, some business gurus, for example. I know they're supposed, like, you have the students who's, like, really good at marketing, so they'll figure, like, hey, you are you did really good on that marketing project. I'm sure, you, I'm sure you'll be great for this kind of accounting project. And, you know, the fact of the matter is, no, that dude did well on that project because he was trained for that one specific thing. He's not going to do great if you put him in a completely different environment. You're just kind of setting yourself up for failure. You know, certainly there's some things that translate across competency, so present-mindedness, stuff like that. That's very easy to transfer across because it's just kind of a state of mind. It's just kind of your the way you operate. But stuff like technical things and such, those cannot be translated over so easily. Okay. 
<clears throat> I should drink some water. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wish away the 3D model here back to kind of get some more working room. I'm going to take like a middle part of this to color it in. We'll also need to make two folders in here. One for the front of the, what do you call it, the front, internal neck front. Got that here. That is this layer now, that's the back. That's the back layer. Okay, so I'm gonna add that here. Call this one turtleneck back. Okay. Delete that layer there because we no longer need it. <clears throat> yeah, the good news is that, it one, that we can probably like start shading this once we kind of get more into it. Like I said, this is definitely not, not something that's going to be finished this stream, I don't think. But on the other hand, that kind of takes off a lot of pressure for me, so I'm happy about that. You know, we'll, we'll try to get, we'll try to move this thing along. I feel like I should try to do one of these a month, you know? Maybe with not, maybe like with less complicated designs in the future, though. After all, I do just kind of want to get better at rigging and modeling. Well, no, if that's the case, I, complex models would be better. The important thing is I just friggin' do it, you know? It's, it's important to just kind of get, grab it by the horns. If you start hesitating too much, it's no good. Okay, that should be the shirt base. <laughs> Why can I smell this chicken noodle soup? What do my neighbors must be cooking? God, I remember one time... I, I, I got my second shot of uh, the COVID vaccine. Um, sometime last year, I think... I think sometime in October it was that I got my second shot. I don't remember what time precisely, but I do remember that I, that because it hit a lot of my family like really hard. You know, I, I remember for them like it was the second shot that like really took them out. It wasn't the first shot. Uh, I basically stocked up on like ibuprofen. I made myself like this huge, huge pot of chicken soup. You know, because I, I figured like, oh my god, if I'm gonna get knocked out, I, I need to have food ready. And you know, when you're when you're kind of like feeling low, what better what is what better nutrients, sustenance is there than chicken soup. So I made myself like an enormous pot of chicken soup, so huge that it almost kind of struggled. Like, it was a big fucking pot. It was like the size of my stomach, that pot. Like, from 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 hip to abdomen, to the top of the abdomen, that's how big it was. It was like the size of a... It, that pot could very easily contain an entire, like three or four cats. I feel like that's the best kind of measure, think of measurement that I can do. Yeah, forget fluid ounces. How many cats can your container fit? Anyway, um, I made the I made a huge thing of chicken noodle soup, and I was and because I didn't get sick after that because I, because I'm kind of a badass, but I did have like I did have to eat chicken noodle soup for like an entire week. That was an interesting experience. It was fun kind of like making a huge soup from scratch. Uh, unfortunately, like none of the bowls that I have kind of heat up well in the microwave. So that, that ended up ruining the experience a little bit for me. Something that we can do as well is to kind of um, add a bit of shading here. So instead of having like a solid line here, we can just have a little bit of shading to show that to show where this thing is falling. But like I said, we can figure that out later. Yeah. 
I imagine that making a live 2D model is going to be a trying process no matter kind of what you do. But I feel like over time it's going to become more natural as you kind of figure out, a, as you kind of like gain that ingenuity. Okay, thank God. We need the head back. I'm not. I, I'm not gonna lie. It's kind. It, it feels weird if we don't have the head back. Hmm. What would it look like if I if I put it between the two turtleneck things? I don't know. Does that look friendlier? I don't know if that looks friendly or more menacing somehow, because I feel like if it's just over like that, it looks somehow stranger. I could put it on top, but that would mean like... I mean, let's try it out. No, that would probably mess with the symmetry. Hmm. Yeah, let's just keep it like that for now. We'll, we'll, we can figure out more in the future. Okay, so I guess I kind of want to draw the pants next, but I feel like I should maybe take care of the jacket first. No, no, let's do the pants first. You know why? Because then we can figure out how the helmet's going to go. Wait, no, we decided the helmet would be in their hands. I think if we have the, okay, if we have the pants, then that way we can figure out how it'll, how it'll affect the helmet, how much of the helmet we'll need to draw. But we'll probably have to draw all of it anyway. This is a toughie. Okay, we'll draw the jacket. We'll draw the jacket first, mainly because I feel like that'll be easier. Because it's still symmetrical. Okay. Jacket torso. Oh, that reminds me. I, I there was actually a um, I have a folder of Life 2D resources that I keep around, and one of the ones that I found that has helped me a lot with how I make my models is this hierarchy thing that I found on Twitter. So in Life 2D, once you have your model imported, you can actually set the hierarchy in certain ways. So, but this actually also helped me figure out like, hey, maybe I should have this, this thing here, this thing there. So this one has, seems to have like a, this one seems to separate, separated by shoulder and by hand, uh, shoulder, elbow, R, and hand. So I feel, so I feel like that maybe that's the best way to do it. Yeah. It's very considerate of them to I feel like it's almost better for them to make it to have it have a skirt automatically because I feel like that would help a lot with I feel like that'll help some people a lot. <laughs> Tiny ice cream sandwich. Alright, we we can close that though. I, I will um I, I I think I should save it here though. Uh Gale model. There we go. Hmm. Oh yeah. I read about this one business in Texas, I believe it was, that got very popular by importing sodas. So basically, you know, a lot of uh, different states have their own kind of regional soda variants. And apparently this dude actually managed to make a business out of collecting those and selling them in other states. Yeah, I, th I think it got big at a bar first, and then that's kind of how, how he started that empire, so to speak. I feel like I feel like it's weird calling stuff empires anymore, you know? Like, oh, it's a business empire. That just feels weird. <clears throat> because when you say empire, I'm, picture I'm picturing, like, a fleet of factories. I'm picturing some freaking Charlie and the Chocolate Factory type shenanigans. Not, not like a... You know, not like this one dude selling soda bottles. Okay. 
Oh, right, we need the, uh, the ruler here. All right, I think, I think starting with the shoulders is the best bet. That'll also help a little bit when we're kind of separating the layers, I think. Okay, and then over here, and then like this. I feel like th this feels good, I think. I did have that one kind of like triangular thing here though. I need, I need to incorporate that. the pockets, which are going to kind of come up from here. I feel like having some fried food tonight. I think I'll, I'll I think when I uh, make myself some dinner, I'll make some fried chicken, or rather, air fry some defrosted fried chicken. It, it is a simple life of mine, but it, but it is mine. It is a, it is simple this life I lead, but it is mine. I think that's how the quote goes. I'm not sure where I read that the first time, but you know, it, I feel like these days a lot of people can identify with that. You know. It's not, it's nothing fancy, but I do like the way that I live. You know, I'm happy being who I am. And really, that's quite a blessing if you think about it. There we go. Let's see. I'm blending that in there. Or tapering, I suppose, is the proper phrase. Then over there. Yeah, we'll, we'll add the uh, collar here. I think the way we're going to do this is we're going to have the jacket torso in between, in between the uh, shirt base and the neck base. And then we'll have the... It, it occurs... It's not lost on me, the kind of karmic hilarity that I don't have a neck and this person doesn't have a neck either. What if I just like made it a policy that I I won't rig for I won't rig a, a live 2D model unless it is neckless. I feel like there has to be at least like some freak like that running around. <laughs> Okay, this is going to be the collar. So we'll need a uh, thing for the ear. Actually, first, let's... um. Okay, let's color this in first. So get rid of this for the moment. And this. These two as well. Yeah, th this shouldn't take too long, thankfully. Oh yeah, I also need to label this yellow because I need to remove one of the jack one of the halves of the jacket once I'm done. Yeah, that's what the yellow one meant. 
that I have like some symmetry in there that's not going to be able to fly in the final model. How do I put this? When you when you have like the model, you don't want it to be, you want it to be symmetrical, but you don't want both of the things on there because that's just going to mess up the way it works. What the? What are these little lines here? Get out of here, little lines. Okay. Hmm. I'm wondering what to do about the jacket zipper. I could add an extra line here. I feel I feel like that's maybe the safe the safest option to do. Wasn't there like a actual like zipper thing that I got in here? I feel like there has to be something in here that has like zippers. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so here's how we're gonna do this. We're gonna... <clears throat> yeah, there's no delicate way to say this. We're gonna wing it. Uh, Leo. Okay, now we need to we need to add like another ruler here. How though? Linear ruler, curve ruler. Here we go. Oh, I see. Hang on. Okay, so we're gonna need to make this here, this here, and this here. Yeah, okay. This should do it. I just like roll this out just a little bit. There we go, attaboy. And then we can finally just kind of like erase it right around here. And that should cover us. Oh, we can also add a bit of a stroke here to make sure that it looks proper. We can also like uh, add a color thing to this thing to make sure that it looks purple like it does it here which is purple yeah there we go see crisis averted and all it took was like it was a weirdly absurd amount of effort of effort that seems to be a running motif around here Okay, but yeah, we've got a, we've got a one half of her jacket done at least. Then the other half would be the collar. All right, now we can decrease the increase the transparency on this, increase the transparency on this. Just give ourselves a real nice kind of area to work on. <clears throat> yeah. Oh yeah. The reason I brought up the soda export guy was because I remember that back back in one of the places where I used to live, there used to be this place that just imported all kinds of weird stuff. I guess you couldn't even call it importing. Well, no, you could call it importing. Essentially, it was all just like Betty Crocker stuff and like very gimmicky kind of uh, Western snacks. Like I remember they had like these Shaquille O'Neal cream sodas that I used to love getting. Yeah, weird vibe on the place, but th but they had reasonable prices. Plus, if you wanted to get a good cut of meat, that that was like the guy to go to. Weirdly enough, it, like they they could like get you like very good sausage. Simplify vector line. Here we go.
Perfect. Okay, now we can work on the, uh, what do I call the... Uh, what is this? The collar, right. Okay. It always scares me a little bit when it takes me a couple, a, a cop, a couple of minutes to, or not, not even minutes, seconds, a couple of seconds to remember what the hell I was working on. Right, I also need a symmetrical ruler for this. Yeah, second verse, same as the first, kind of like how we did with the turtleneck. We'll, we'll have a front part of the collar, and that's going to blend into the, the into a back part. Mm, that looks kind of weird, though. I kind of want it to be almost like vertical. Yeah, like that. Man, I hope I'm not oversimplifying this part. I feel like I am, but... Hmm. Well, we'll figure... We'll either figure it out or we won't. There we go. I feel like these almost need to be bigger. Well, I, I guess I, we can achieve that a little bit with the back part of the collar. That's not that's not something we need to worry about super super much just yet. Okay, we can color this in for the moment. Just kind of like have it ready. And right here. Okay. Yeah, I think this does mean, however, that we'll have to like, we'll have to like taper the zipper kind of around here. So we can take care of that right now, actually, before we forget. There has to be a more elegant way to do this. Maybe... Oh wait, hang on, I've got an idea. Maybe I can like just have the zipper on its own, kind of doing its own thing. Kind of like leading up to here. I think that might be the best, the, the, the kind of best solution. Yeah, 
Yeah, we'll just have the zipper kind of doing its own thing back here. I feel, yeah, I feel like that's the best way we can do it. That way we can manipulate it on, by its own, or by itself, more like. Okay, from there we can start working on the rest of the collar here. Now that's going to need to go behind the, uh, the, the, what do you call the, uh, the quote-unquote neck base. Okay, and then kind of keep keep going from there. We'll need to thicken up this line here to make sure that it can blend in well. Also, we'll need to remember to make this uh, symmetrical. So where is that ruler? Oh, I should probably like vanish the head base a little bit to make room for it. God, I, I hate this poor I hate her weird hamburger lips. It looks a little bit like a macaron, actually, not a hamburger. It, it looks it looks like a macaron, not a hamburger. My apologies for the confusion. Okay, that's gonna kind of blend in like this. Oh good, we can kind of vanish those away for the moment. Connect these two, and actually we're going to need to raise this up just a little bit. We can simplify it as well to make sure that it all goes smoothly. We're going to need to raise it a little bit. It's probably no longer symmetrical, but that's fine. We can fine-tune that in Live 2D itself. Hmm. It's a little square around here, isn't it? Oh, we can just kind of split this in half, though. That's a, that's true, though. We can actually just split this in half, and that's going to cause minimal conflict, I think. I think. Let's give it a shot. Okay. Vanish, wash that away, and then we can just kind of uh, yeah, we'll we'll take that out too. Okay, and then we all need to add that kind of like cream color, I think, for the back of it. I think that's how it was in the uh, reference, right? Yeah, it was just that kind of same kind of a space color. Okay, and that's just going to kind of flip around to the back there. Will that be enough? I feel like that's going to be enough, probably. Yeah, I think that's enough. Yeah, we can add some shading to it later to make it fancy, but I think for the moment that's going to be serviceable.
Yeah. Hmm. All right. I think we'll do the arms, and then that's gonna be the end of stream. I feel. I feel like. I, I feel like. Uh. I don't know. I'm. I'm. I'm kind of tired today, honestly. Uh, let's go see who we can raid first. Yeah, I, I, I think I think we're gonna wrap the things up right here for today. Um, I'm honestly a little tired. I don't know why, but I, th I think I think just making live 2D models really takes it out of me. <laughs> all right, who all is streaming? Oh, Wari is uh, streaming uh, Gloomwood. That's gonna be interesting. Let's go say hi. All right. Um, yeah. So I think for for the moment, I think this is gonna be. Hang on, I'm gonna go to the just chatting here. Oh no, I'm in a corner. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, I think this is a goodbye for now. And um, yeah, on Saturday I will be trying to build a gunpla for the first time. So hopefully that'll be much more energetic than the, than I was today. I'm sorry, I don't know what happened to my energy. It just really dropped off right here. <laughs> but uh, I hope you all have a great rest of your week. Have a great Friday and. Uh, yeah. See you all later. Bye.